all. Welcome to today's episode of Amata Cafe. Today's topic is assessment and benchmark. Today we are having Mrs. Vamshipriya Amar, Principal MVG International School, who will put some light on different domains of learning and also discuss about self-assessment. I welcome Vamshipriya ma'am to the episode. Thank you so okay. much, Pravati. Okay, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, my first question is, is it important to consider how to best measure the learning that you want your, your students to achieve? Uh, thank you for the question because it's very important and NEP 2020 also speaks about a lot of transformation in assessments. Uh, it should be integrated. Say, for instance, the assessment should integrate your grading, your learning, and it should motivate the students uh, for a well-designed kind of learning. When I say that, uh, I mean to mention that assessments should be differentiated between off learning for learning and as learning. Again, assessments are ongoing. So when I say again ongoing, uh, you need to learn your children very well. When I say you have to learn your children very well, you need to know them. Know them from their strengths, know them from their weaknesses. So what are their potentials and what they can really implement in their learning or probably empower themselves in that particular uh, whatever they're good at in that strength is very important for a guide, for a facilitator, for a teacher to assess. Uh, and also the, the students should also be taught how to assess their own strengths and weaknesses. We generally call in corporate term as what analysis, that is strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So it is very important to measure their strengths because even when I say strengths, they need to rank the priority. Some might be very good in music. That is in composing of a song, maybe. I'm just giving you an example. So if they're good in composing a song, that doesn't mean they love to sing or they're good in singing. No doubt music is their profession or music is their passion, music is their liking, music is their interest. But unfortunately, they might not be talented enough to um, score well or probably excel in that field. But given a chance, they can compose music beautifully. That's why even in the field of music, we do have lyricists, we do have somebody to sing, somebody to produce and somebody to direct as well. So for me, I feel uh, it is very important and the best measure for learning, uh, especially when we do not put it as bottleneck in the form of grades or in the form of uh, what is called as scores or somewhere where it is a threat to a child. Instead, assist them in their own fields because the careers are empty. Um, if I think about a radio jockey, his career is to speak. His career and his talent is about uh, communication, effective communication, how well he can communicate and internalize to put it across to the target audience or probably capture the interest of the target audience. Now, if that is his strength, how do we identify this in our school, universities or in colleges where children are being groomed for their transformation in skills, probably in debates, where children really work on their skills of communication, their argumental skills, their risk-taking skills, or probably even their word of mouth, the way they convince the public. So that could be one of the, one of the uh, activities or uh, one of the uh, strategic move which the teacher can take while assessing. Maybe the role plays. See, people are very good in elevator pitch. Say, for instance, street vendors, aren't they really good in their voice modulation, the way they L in the streets to capture the interest of every household people? That means to say they're rich and they are talented enough with a good voice and they can communicate and take the, um, the audience in, into confidence. So basically, um, it could be the role modeling as a part of a strategic move for assessments, which can also be taken into consideration. Uh, in, in, the process, in the process, how well the students are engaged in participation, in their competency levels, plays a very important role when the teacher has to really assess their innate potentials or skills. 
this is what i feel is very important for a child okay ma'am thank you thank you so much for the answer so my next question is in your opinion what kinds of um, assessment tasks are most effective in supporting student learning and why okay uh, first of all i am a person who would love to say backward designing is very important uh, let me just give a small briefing because i come from a school background or probably in the field of education um what i feel is learning outcome for anything becomes a prime most priority uh, importance when i say learning outcomes it is how we we empower children in their activities in the skills in their competencies learning outcome for a item learning outcome for an activity a learning outcome for any kind of assessments the teachers do or even the learning outcome to design a worksheet when we know what is expected from a child towards the end of an activity or towards the end of a quiz towards the end of a role play towards the end of as simple as a mind map designing from the child that is the activity set as a form of an assessment um we need to see what is the end result that the teacher is expecting the backward designing is what i feel is important because that emphasizes a lot of critical role in an assessment if this is what i i want to i expect from a child towards the end of an activity is well foreseen by the teacher right at the beginning then she can set what exactly can be a proactive measure to achieve that end right so we call it as backward designing so i design my entire lesson plan keeping the end result in fact it is one of the habits of mind as stated by stephen covey he says keep the end in mind and then work that is one of the habits of mind which uh, stephen covey has mentioned then also i uh, one more thing which i feel is very important is reflective thinking beat a teacher or beat a student after a set of activity are done set of activities are done in a classroom or one activity however however the teacher wants to because there could be a complete um, uh, set of activities planned for a 40 minute session or a one hour session in a classroom simple activities which could be a writing one which could be answering two questions or could be something which is drawn immediately and so on a multiple assessment which can happen in the form of an activities to ensure whether the child is visually um, uh, intelligent or verbally intelligent or probably he is kinesthetically intelligent or interpersonally intelligent or intrapersonally intelligent logical intelligent linguistic intelligent and so on the list goes on because multiple intelligences are 10 in number uh, we are keeping all these things in mind maybe the scaffolding of all intelligences by the teacher is foreseen and she must have kept it in such a case reflecting at every given point is extremely important because that's a experience of the teacher as well as the student from the teacher's perspective she will see whether the activity that she has planned for an assessing uh, for an assessment of the child is uh, uh, successful or not sometimes it so happens the activity might be very well planned but the execution might not have happened from the teacher's point of view from the child's point of view the child might have got totally engaged in an activity without the end in mind he doesn't know why he is involved in that activity right that means the end results might have not been achieved as simple as an experiment i conduct an experiment beautifully in the way it is being pronounced in uh, by the teacher or demonstrated by the teacher or by viewing a learning log i might have conducted complete experiment but towards the end of the experiment i do not know why i conducted that is from the child's perspective see uh, there are children especially in the higher classes they do question us why is this happening or why or what is it that you want me to do at the end of this particular activity why have you planned this activity for me i have encountered couple of them in my journey as a teacher there were students from the 12th grade who said ma'am please tell us why are we doing this activity right in such a case it's very important for us to reflect maybe experimental maybe laboratory work as simple as a sport activity also forget about that it could be your own dress sense 
why is it that in a golf field, I have to wear a t-shirt which is collared, right? So questions can come in any way. So uh, I feel the kinds of assessment should be based the way the child learns. That is very important. And every time you need to have a reflection behind. Uh, that, that is the second point I would like to mention. One is the backward designing. And the second is the reflective thinking that we need to keep in mind. Thirdly, every activity set should be smart. When I say smart, I think we are all very much equipped with the acronym specific, measurable, attainable, you know, relevant, as well as time-bound activities. Now, say, for instance, as simple as this, an activity is set in a class within the duration of 40 minutes. If the teacher does not execute that activity and is, in, uh, is successful in taking that activity forward, the entire process is just, um, I would say, a waste of time. I'm sorry, I'm using waste of time. But I think it is true because time is so precious and that 40 minutes lost and the planning which has gone behind, if it is just into a drain, I don't think it's successful. So how do we plan for an activity? Simple exercise, CYP, check your progress. In other words, I call it as a reflection from the teacher, a reflection from the student. Whatever I have taught, is it very well executed? Is it very well assimilated by the teacher? Uh, and the student together in collaboration because nowadays teacher is no longer a uh, sage on the stage, right? She's a guide by the side. Invariably, she would also like to reflect along with children. All the more now, because of the online sessions, we've had a flipped learning, flipped classrooms in that role reversal of a teacher has happened. Maybe the teacher is trying to check the 21st century skills of the child or a group if it is an individual child, I would think about the effective communication. If it is a group, it is about the collaboration within the group, which is very essential further to their career also. Maybe a project leader, maybe a mentor, maybe a mentee. So these are the soft skills which automatically will be groomed, nurtured when the teacher has the focus and that focus is the learning outcome. So okay. uh, these are the few yeah. things I would like to take up uh, as a part of the question given. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, ma'am, my next question is, what are the various tips involved in creating an assessment plan? Okay. Uh, here, I would like to give a few things. I think uh, you, that people can just uh, take it. Uh, um, assessment plan, right? First of all, assessment plan, before we go ahead, there are two types of assessment. One is a summative assessment, one is a formative assessment. The summative assessment speaks a lot about assessment of learning. That means to say there is an end, there is a full stop to a learning. Towards the end of an, uh, I mean, towards the end of an year or an uh, academic year, what happens? There's an exam. After the exam, the scores come or the grades or CPGAs, whichever. You know, your grade point or probably it could be your uh, grades which we follow, or it could be the marks, but that is the end. There is no look back. That becomes summative. That means it's a summation of the entire year's learning. When I think about the formative assessment, the formative assessment, again, should be taught in three dimensions. What are those three dimensions of learning? Assessment of learning, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning. Now, to some extent, assessment of learning, which comes in assessment, formative assessments, is a part of the summative assessment. Rather, if the summative assessment is the entire union or it's an entire set, the subset becomes assessment, uh, formative assessment in which assessment of learning is considered. Because maybe there is a surprise test in a school or maybe there is sudden uh, a quiz and that is a part of an internal assessment which the teacher wants to do. So that becomes assessment of learning. Now going to assessment for learning and assessment as learning. These are the two important crucial points because NEP 2020 also speaks about assessment for learning and assessment as learning. For learning becomes a collaborative learning. The teacher has set an activity with a certain learning outcome. The ch child is doing that activity for learning. 
why he is indulging himself in that particular activity it is for his own learning so the teacher has set her learning outcome in such a fashion that the child is imbibed the child is engaged the child is encouraged in that activity for his own learning further to if i think about assessment as learning an assessment as learning becomes entirely a self assessment you know uh, it is as simple suppose i i am asked to try to understand my own strengths and weaknesses again i'll come back to uh, one example i might enjoy somebody dancing i might enjoy somebody dancing i might not be talented enough to dance i hope you are all uh, you are getting that point i might enjoy somebody dancing because i love dance my love for dance is different my talent to excel the dance is different as well as my passion for dancing is different so these things child needs to understand so that there'll be a conducive environment in class there'll be a healthy mental status as the child is getting groomed for his life skills because he can face out by saying hey this is not my cup of tea i love dancing but unfortunately i'm not talented enough to dance my friend is talented let me encourage him see that's a life skill for life right otherwise children become so lonely because they feel oh god they are all dancing very well but i am not able to dance right so this is the kind of things that the teacher has to keep in mind so that her assessment plan becomes very very clear so she needs to know what are the kind of activities which engages the child where an assessment for learning can take place during that for learning she can identify the child's strength and probably later have a bubble time with the child to understand whether what she is thinking or whether what she is analyzed is in par with what the child has its potential so then there is a mapping there is no learning gap of the child because the teacher knows the child's innate potentials right so then the child the teacher also should encourage the child to get back to his own understanding and also to take that courage to say i cannot do this wherein i am capable of doing this so the child knows what he has to do what is his strength what is his power and excel in that sometimes it so happens the child is dominant in three four things that is when the multiple intelligences also plays an important role and also uh, help the uh, child to categorize his interests um this will certainly help him in identifying his own way of um what to say uh, potentials which he can categorize and say i am good at communication so maybe i am verbally smart i am good at painting and drawing i am good at capturing things from that particular image gathering information data from that image which is being projected that means to say i am a visual person anything the teacher teaches my hands go into drawing maybe a concept map or maybe a mind map or maybe a flow chart or maybe in the form of a picture that i can remember because that is how his right brain acts so then he is able to identify that he is good in visual intelligence right some people love music i love to solve my trigonometric problems or differential calculus problems by listening to music so i i am an auditory person but equally i am a music smart person so i love that uh, soothing music which will encourage me in doing my work so basically what i'm trying to say is or probably uh, one more example is uh, people who are linguistic smart they love they might be journalists in future we never know because they love to write they are word smart people they language smart people so the anything you tell they quickly jot down in their own way of writing and they have a flowery touch to everything that you say and they bring in humor beautifully into their uh, creative writing or report writing uh, so when you plan your assessments um, my humble appeal to everybody is it's not easy assessments are not so easy it's very difficult maybe summation maybe exam planning for
Lang? Exactly. Having a blueprint is very easy uh, because we have the portions. We have, yeah. Yes, ma'am. No, no, so, no. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, continue. Okay, that's how it is. So I, I feel a teacher should have a very good covenant bonding with children, that kind of relationship with children. So the teacher and student no doubt have that uh, barrier or that radius that she is my guru and I'm her disciple. But still at times it should scaffolds the learning of the child. That should be her way of assessing um, or the plan that she does. And also anything that is being taught should certainly be, uh, I would say the misconception should be taken care. If the misconceptions are moving along with the child, no point planning for any kind of assessment. The planning should be misconceptions free. That means whatever instruction she plays in front of the child, whatever rubrics that she is planning for the child's assess uh, assessment for an activity should be very clear, clear instruction. Then succinctness should be there because she should uh, uh, have a clarity of what she's assessing, what are the parameters that she is testing, what are the criteria that is used during the assessment should be very clear and it should be collaborative. It should be discussed with the children. This is what I expect from an activity. These are the parameters which would be tested in an activity or probably I am gauging in an activity. So the child knows that, yes, this is what ma'am is wanting us to do. And he or she is in par with the wavelength of thinking the wavelength set for an activity. So then I think it's a win-win situation between the teacher as well as the student. But let me tell you, it is easy to talk unless until we practice it, put it in action. I don't think we are successful enough. Every time the same activity is being assessed, my assessment plan will be certainly improvising day by day. No doubt, it is the same concept, but the kind of assessments I use to implement on the child will be different. Okay, so what are the few benefits of the this assessment? Hello, ma'am, am I audible? I just do. Do you have any issue with the network? You're not audible, ma'am. Actually, ma'am is facing some uh, network issue. She will join soon. Yes, ma'am. So, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I hope I'm audible now. Yes, ma'am. So uh, shall I repeat the question, ma'am? No, no, I have heard it, ma'am. I've heard it. Okay. Thank you so much for the question. Okay. I think if I'm right, you had asked what are the benefits of assessment, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, one ma to identify again, one to identify my own inner strength, to identify the weak, muddiest points, you know. Uh, where are the great Areas where I lack any kind of understanding. Uh, uh, so, so basically, uh, you are able to gauge your own strengths and weakness. Uh, I hope that was a clear one. And second thing is, I also, also mentioned classroom assessment techniques is important. The peer strategic moves or the self-assessment techniques that uh, are, uh, are practiced in large way will certainly help 
uh, the children to identify. Basically, it is self-awareness. A lot of life skills can be developed in such a manner. Let's say a group activity. And during the group activity, one might be very fast in grasping whatever has been mentioned by, uh, by the teacher. He can be a resource person within the group. He can empower the others who really require help. So that way what happens, uh, if the teacher has planned for a group assessment, the group assessment within the group, if there are six children, there can be a mentor, they can be a, a mentee who is getting groomed, they can be peers who are helping out, individual leadership skills can be empowered, okay? And also the patience, if I go by the affective domain, the patience to hear someone out, okay? And also, consolidating and culminating everybody's opinion is also a skill. It's not easy because I might be dominant with my opinion. When I work in a group, I am patient enough to listen to others as well. So there are a lot of soft skills. There are life skills as well as academic skills, which will be empowered exponentially when we think about formative assessments, ongoing assessments, unlike the summative assessment. These are the few benefits and uh, we can get deeper into it. Okay. So what is the role of assessment in uh, learning? Hello, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there I would yeah. say it is. Now do let me know if I'm audible. I'm keeping yes, my other gadget. Is that fine? Keep yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh, are you able to? Ma'am, um, your voice is breaking actually. fine now yes oh no ma'am no ma'am not audible right now it's audible it's audible yes yes okay okay fine uh sorry for that uh mindful okay. assessments are few approaches that cultivate our inner technology of knowing um, this cultivation is, com uh, uh, you know, a very important pedagogical move, which in turn helps some kind of self-awareness, evaluation, and as well as assessment as learning. So the role of assessment. Ma'am, actually your video is no grooming. I think number one. Ma'am, uh, your, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now it's okay. I'm fine now. I'm yes, ma'am. To uh, get into another gadget. It's okay, ma'am. Is that so, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, fine. Because I think when I'm getting onto my laptop, there's a problem. When I'm on my okay, phone, it's fine. So, okay. okay thank you. Yeah. I will just uh, mute one. So that that should be. Okay, ma'am. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, fine. Now I've turned off on gadget, this should be fine. Uh, so you okay. were asking me, uh, what is the role of assessments in learning? Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Was that the question? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I was just telling the inner technology of knowing is very important because that's when we try to gauge and uh, go ahead. First of all, number one, it's about the self-awareness. The child becomes aware of his own inner strengths. The second thing is self-grooming. Self-grooming also happens because the child knows where exactly he has to really pitch in and work on his inner strengths. It's all about self and I'll put it into four quadrants. Number one, it is self-awareness. Number two, it is about self-evaluation. 
Number three, it is about self reflection. Number four, it is about self progress. So all of it is revolving around self. For example, I'm thinking about assessments in learning itself. If I think about self awareness, where am I going wrong? What is it I'm lacking? Uh, what is it that I can improvise? Okay. Uh, what is it that I can uh, check and try to scale up? These are the things which will help me to be aware of myself also. It will tell me where exactly I'm dipping. Am I dipping in my problem solving skills? Am I dipping in my decision making skills? Or am I dipping in my collaborative skills, in my communication skills, etc.? The child has got some kind of clue with the first self awareness, what I have mentioned. The next thing is self evaluation. The child will be able to identify the pros and cons of his successful arena and his deficit areas. So that becomes his second point, that is self-evaluating. He is able to judge where he stands all for himself. Thirdly, I did mention it is about self-reflection. What is it that I am not good at? What is it which is my potential? What are the areas where I should focus and improve. So what is happening during the self-reflection, he is cultivating that kind of habits. Habits and the culture formation and the work culture is set within. No one needs to train him. He's training his own brain or her own brain. He's getting accommodative enough with his own self, rather empathizing with his own self. See, that's a value, no doubt. I need to empathize with somebody. But first, I need to empathize with my own self to identify what am I good at and what am I not good at, where I fit in. Lastly, self-progress. Hey, I think I can put some more effort where I can excel. If not excel, at least improvise by 5%, by 10%. So he can set standards for himself benchmarks for himself today if i've got around 50 percent of it right tomorrow maybe i will attempt at 55 percent or 60 percent right answers provided dash 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 improvises provided i pay attention on these skills that is the beauty of assessment in learning okay so my next question is uh, should assessment be made fair Sorry, ma, I didn't hear you. Should assessment uh, made be fair? Of course, yes. Assessments have to be made fair. Why they have to be made fair? Because the child is can get really debatable, can get really into arguments, uh, heated arguments. And many teachers, if they are listening to me, they would say, yes, ma'am, the child really argues with me why I have lost out on my grades. Why is it that both of us have put up the same work, but he's got a B and I've got a C. Now you may say, ma'am, you said A is course as well as marks come under summative assessment. And why are we taking this further for our discussion? But yes, even in a formative, uh, formative way of assessment, there are some as rubrics. Rubrics is a diagnostic tool. A diagnostic tool wherein we identify the parameters on which the assessments are being gauged, right? Say, for instance, it's a role play or it's a laboratory experiment or it could be a sport field experiment or, yeah, because I'm integrating sports into my subject or into my discipline. So what happens? I would be wanting to check on few, maybe, and hand-eye coordination, or maybe I'm checking on my presentation, or maybe I'm checking on my voice modulation, or maybe I'm checking on my drawing skills with the precision. So when I say drawing skills, when have I given the child A or he is excellent in drawing? Has to be described. So it falls with the descriptors, the parameters and the descriptors should be matched in such a manner when the child looks for himself it is self-explanatory so it becomes fair hey i am ma'am has graded me c 
only because in drawing this is how it is being described and i fall under c so it's a self it's a win win situation again because the child has got his answers directly from the rubrics which has been set by the teacher when i say rubric it is not only identifying the parameters okay presented tick good bad ugly average excellent outstanding etc he writes his presentation is excellent when do you call it excellent his presentation is outstanding when do you call it outstanding so there should be a descriptor presenter that is if i take my vertical columns as my parameters if my horizontal columns are grades obviously the grades should have descriptors when did i give d for presentation why did i give d for presentation so that gives a fair very clear picture to the child to the parent and to the teacher so the triangular connections between the teacher parent and the student is thorough or probably it's very very clear so why we are using this self assessment a very important thing obviously um when i say again self assessment sometimes it so happens we are very clear the teacher is also uh, in fact when i say self assessment it not only holds good for the student um it holds good even for the teacher i think my participants who are here would agree first of all the teacher should assess her class did it take place the way i had planned have i done justice to my class she needs to assess her own work did i get the entire class into interaction mode or was there some possibility where i can improve that is from the teacher's perspective the child's perspective every other friend of mine got totally entangled with that particular activity what made me not get involved in that activity what is it that i was deprived is it because it was an activity wherein it required a lot of uh, uh, what to say drawing is it because it was an activity where it called for explanation and i am poor in communication i could not explain what i am thinking or probably write verbally uh, verbally or non verbally present it or is it because i don't have that interpersonal people managerial skills and that is the reason i am backing you know such kind of self assessment in a healthy manner to go uh, as teachers you know i i i am i am hoping people will understand we have three domains the three domains are nothing but cognitive affective as well as psychomotor domain somewhere down the line we are all focusing on cognitive domain we are forgetting about affective domain it is going lopsided so people are not understanding the importance of affective domain which encourages children to uh, what is called as um, uh, their feelings you know and their attitudes their values their emotions all of this is also very very important why okay. are they important why are they important because the child's mental hygiene should also be kept in mind social emotional learning is highly important so the way he contributes in a group the way he emotionally balances it i mean if i can use the words sita pragna he needs to be that kind of a person who knows to balance it's very difficult ma'am for a child of 12 years how do i teach emotional balance it is by practice it is by conditioning if you have everything thorough and right from the beginning if you start thinking about it then i think self assessment and in a regulated fashion everything cannot be left on the child alone it has to be regulated by the teacher till the child understands the crux of the problem okay ma'am so uh next can you suggest a few self assessment strategies and how can uh, they be compartmentalized into assessment as learning okay self assessment strategies okay uh, one small thing which i can share my own experience and this program was piloted in malaysia so that is uh, i mean at that given point of time i was in an icse school and it really took off very well uh, why it became important now what used to happen is uh um, i know i'm in social media but yet i would like to take this uh, uh, th uh, uh this particular uh, example 
very much in open because even I'm a parent. Okay. Uh, as a parent, what do we feel? We love to know where exactly the child has lost that one mark or two marks or three marks, etc. Right. <laughs> So my assessment strategy then, uh, maybe in 2000 itself, was self-assessment. How did we do? An example to all the participants who are here to take this as a takeaway. Let's say you've got a, a question paper and it is the examination has been done. after. This is a scenario after the examination. So after the examination, ask the children to walk into the classroom, leaving all the stationery, and uh, then give the key answers to the children. Let them do their self-evaluation. Key answers are given and the children, one key answer per table and let us assume that there are two children sitting in that particular table. So one key answer. So obviously what happens, the children will look at the key answer and then tally their marks. But before which the teacher should have told how exactly it has been devised the entire question paper that means the blueprint or the marking scheme of that particular um, question paper and the answer is being very much explained to the children also she can compartmentalize all those answers into the skills which she had planned maybe 20 percent of the question paper was on knowledge 15 percent was on problem solving 5% was based on information gathering. Then like that, she would have devised it, isn't it? Because that was her learning outcome or probably an objective which she would have planned for the paper, the question paper. And we all know we have a marking scheme as well as a blueprint that we follow. If this is being very well explained and then the key answer is given, the child does not have any other stationery, but uh, but he has only his question paper and the answer key, they tally it. After they tally it, there will be a graphical analysis. When they do the graphical analysis, I hope I am seeing here, uh, this is the vertical part and this is the horizontal part, this is a y-axis and this is the x-axis. So in the x-axis part of it, they will mention the skills, which are the identified skills for that paper, which has been told by the teacher. Let's say there were five skills throughout the paper. The five skills have been very clearly identified and written by the child. And on their vertical uh, line or the y-axis, they have their marks. After they have tall tallied the entire paper, they know for sure how much percentage of the question paper was set for dash skill. So they know how to scale that on the y-axis. The child will, after he or she evaluates his own paper, he'll be tallying it. And this will give some kind of raise and dip, raise and dip as a line graph between the skills versus the marks, right? So now the child knows where he's dipping, where he's raising, where he's dipping, where he's raising. Isn't it a total reflection of their own analysis of the paper? Once they do that, they standards for the next exam. Or they set standards for the next assessment. Hey, I think dash skill. Next time, I have a particular skill. So isn't that own self-assessment? They're doing their own self-evaluation and also setting their benchmarks for the next coming. Engage them and also identify their weaknesses and strengths. And in some areas where they don't feel it is, um, it is lopsided or probably they cannot improve, there are still opportunities or scope for improvement. Okay, ma'am. So my next question is, uh, what is this instant feedback and why it is important? Yes, ma'am, uh, just a second. I'm just okay, my, Yeah, you can take care of that. Yeah. yeah. You did ask me, um, what is this instant, instant feedback? Instant feedback, yes. Feedback mechanism is very important, ma'am. Why is feedback important? It is a feed forward. Just now I was discussing about scope for improvement, right? When I say scope for improvement, the child knows which are the areas, which are the gray areas, because I gave you an example, how we designed that benchmarking and standards in the school, and it was very fruitful. 
Now, uh, feedback is very important. Don't we go to restaurants? And in restaurant, won't they give us the feedback after you finish eating? Do, aren't we not filling it up? You know, generally we do with a rating scale. Four, three, five, or very poor, or a substantial food, etc. But you know why that feedback is taken? Because the chef identifies whether his food was oily, whether it was tastier, whether the, uh, the person who visited the restaurant really relish the food or are there some areas where he can improve now in a restaurant this is done what about children who are young i'm thinking about the toddlers i'm thinking about the pre-primary or in nep language the foundation stage okay what happens with them ask them to give a smiley you show a picture and say is it a smiley frowning face or uh, just a, a sleeping lion face you know there are umpteen number of emojis Children who are so young also would like to give a feedback on the picture which has been put up or displayed in a classroom. Now, how do they relate? Very clearly, and that is how they identify, right? So now, let us think about children who are quite in an adolescent age or probably in higher classes. It's very important because they get a feeling where they have gone wrong. In other words, it's critiquing, critiquing at the appropriate manner. As a principal, madam, I will certainly tell my teachers, it's a sport event. Give me one positive feedback and one negative feedback. I do take for my teachers, for my own work, for my own event organization. Why do I do it so? Because I know I have done very well. I have planned very well, but yet, it did not capture the target audience on that day. So I would like to first take the feedback from my students, from my parents, from my teachers. Then I know, where, and then culminate the entire thing, see the major areas where I failed to make my sport event successful. So what does it give me? A feed forward for my improvement in the coming events. So that's why I feel feedback is very important. And when we give feedback, uh, I, we need to refrain from giving excellent, outstanding, comprehensive, et cetera. It has to be a perfect feedback. The child is excellent in dash. However, he needs to feature dash, 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 and so on. And hats off to the NEP 360 degree holistic progress card that they're coming up. Looking forward for that, actually. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Then, ma'am, authentic, uh, meaningful, and effective uh, student self-assessment requires participants to be honest and vulnerable. So, could you please explain a little about this? Yes. Um, you uh, just come again once again, ma'am, uh, with the question, please. Authentic, uh, meaningful, and effective student self-assessment requires a participant to be honest and vulnerable. So, could you please? Uh, Put some light or explain it yes uh, i think it's very important to keep in mind the academic integrity now why the academic integrity plagiarism cheating conflicts all of this happens again because ethics and integrity fail now when children know this is what is expected in a classroom that means it becomes the ethics of a classroom just like institutional ethics, my institution may have certain ethics which is externally imposed on my children to follow. Say, for instance, none of them should wear dash colored rubber bands or probably whatever is the set rule which we follow, right? So these are the ethics which I need to adhere. Then the integrity part of it is innate. It is internal. Now, these are somewhere failing, and so our values are backseated. So academic integrity is one thing which these assessments, again, I come back to the same topic assessment, will truly engage the children in a proper manner because the teacher is very transparent with children because it's collaboratively constructed. The rubrics or the diagnostic tool which is used to assess the child and frame them under dash, 
when i say dash it could be a b c d or 1 2 3 4 5 pointers which we use or grade points that we give to the children becomes very very transparent when it is collaboratively constructed between the teacher and the student now when these two are clear my academic integrity also will improve how because the child knows he cannot cheat the child knows the plagiarism is not accepted because when you give something for presentation or a project work don't you think you would have set your rubric now and in the rubric your descriptors would have mentioned that so the child automatically knows it should be authentic information it should not involve any of uh, um the derailment from what is expected they cannot delineate themselves right they automatically fall back into that uh, trap of doing their uh, legitimate work or authentic work otherwise what happens one person in the group will finish with his project work the other people just because they need to submit the work they either copy it or probably ask their friends itself to complete it and give higher classes i'm sure the audience will not deny it. such a thing will not happen but if the teacher hand holds when i mean the teacher it's a guide basically the facilitator hand holds the child in a proper manner guides the child and put that value system into the parameters of what she is gauging it as an assessment and describes it very clearly the child knows obviously i would get a c or a e if i wouldn't follow this descriptions so we need to be very clear with our rubrics basically and it has to be collaboratively constructed in a class for every activity that is going to be assessed and this has to go on with an informal assessment itself so that's all for, thank you ma'am thank you so much that's all from our side thank you for joining us today so uh, and i'm also thanking you for sharing this valuable insight about assessment and self uh, bench, benchmark and self assessment and thank you all for joining us today we'll see you on next episode till then it's me parvati sani thank you thank you all so much all the best god bless thank you.